Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is a good God. He's a great God. And he's worthy to be praised. Let me tell y'all something. I woke up this morning. And I, yeah, you're right. And I was thinking about this thing. I was thinking about how I went to sleep last night, right? And in my sleep, I don't know what was going on in the city. I don't know what was going on in my block. I don't know what was going on on the other side of the world. Cause when I was asleep, I was asleep. And then I thought, started thinking about God. And I was like, you know, God made us so that we would get this time of rest and not know anything about anything. Now to me, that's a miracle. Me and God be just going back and forth because I'll be like, man, God, you awesome. So when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul, Minister Harris, cries out hallelujah. And I thank God for saving a wretch like me. You see, I ain't always been saved, y'all. But he must have saw something in me that I didn't see in my own foolish self. And one day he touched me with his finger of love. So I don't know what y'all came to do. I have no idea. But I came to praise the Lord. Because can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. All you got to do is have a flashback and see where he has brought you from. Because y'all know what? We ain't always been in these fine clothes and all this other stuff, right? Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm not going to, because y'all know I can. Anyway, uh, let us stand because we're going to do our scripture. Our scripture is... Psalms 136, verses 1 through 3. And it says, All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. All 
will give thanks unto the Lord, of the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Then it says again, oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Can we give thanks to the Lord because his mercy endureth forever? Not just tomorrow, but forever. Oh, give thanks. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, y'all. The redeem. If you redeem. Now, redeem means bought with a price. And the price we were bought with was the life of Jesus Christ. So if you redeemed, and you know you redeemed, I want you to put your head back like this and say, Hallelujah! Y'all need to do it another time. Come on, I ain't hear everybody. Okay, one more time for the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. See, I was thinking about this thing when it says, praise ye the Lord. Praise, praise ain't quiet. You know, I don't know how we got to the point where we get quiet. We ain't no quiet people. So when we praise the Lord, <laughs> Sister Dildy, we praise him, don't we? So we're going to praise the Lord today for his goodness and his mercy towards us. Because think about it. It could have been another way. It could have been another way. So we're going to ask Sister Gloria Campbell if she would come forward and give us the prayer for this morning. Amen. Amen. Come on here, woman of God. Come on here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because God of who bless he you. is and how awesome he is. Yes, he is. We give him glory and honor. Yeah, we got to make some noise. And we just mm. thank him mm, mm, mm. for waking us up this morning mm, mm. and allowing us to see another beautiful day. Oh, hallelujah. Let's settle our hearts and our mind as we go into the throne of God this morning. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Yes. Oh, Father, you are so awesome and wonderful. Yes. But this is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. What a beautiful day to be alive yes. and to see the beauty of God. The rain, yes. the rain, I love rain because rain to me represent the water of Jesus. So I'm grateful, grateful. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come humble, 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 humble in your presence, God. We just thank you, God, for all that you do right now. And we thank you, God, for what you have already done. We give you honor, we give you praise, hallelujah. We just thank you, God, that you are such a beautiful, wonderful Father. And God, I honor you because of who you are. You are a caring, loving, forgiving, everlasting Father. Just love us in spite of the things that we do. And thank you, God, for just ushering us into your presence, God. And to lift up your holy and righteous name. Father, I thank you, God, that you have already done everything that you're supposed to do. So, God, help us to walk into that blessing this morning, God. Help us, dear Father, to walk into the future, dear God, knowing that you have already done it for us, dear God. We're going to walk and lift our head high and serve the Lord with gladness. Father, I just give you all the glory, God, because you deserve to be honored and praised. 
And God, we just lift up Grace Baptist Church to you this morning, God. God, when I talk about Grace Baptist Church, and I, I, I sometimes reminisce of the things that God can do. But God, I'm no longer reminisce because God, I know you can do it in the name of Jesus. I see preachers and ministers and doctors and lawyers. I see so much in this church that God is going to do for us. I see the Holy Spirit coming down and just rest on us. And each person is going to have what the Lord said you're going to have. I declare it this morning over our life that God... People are going to be able to interpret tongues and we're going to be speaking in tongues in the name of Jesus. We're going to lay on hands on the sick and they're going to be healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you God for the vision that you have given us dear God in Grace Baptist Church because this is going to be the church that's going to bring people to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, because we know you how awesome you are. And God, we not let us not worry about our children, dear God, because you got them. And no matter where or how far they go, dear God, you're gonna bring them back to this place because this is a place of worship. This is a place of praise. This is a place where we come and come boldly before your throne, God and ask for anything and it shall be done in the name of Jesus we pray God we pray for the lost soul this morning dear God that you will bring them into this house God into your presence dear God save some soul this morning God as the word go forth dear God touch hearts dear God and mind Father God, give us a mind that's set upon you, dear God. There's so much attack on our mind because the devil is always busy attacking our mind. But God, we give you our mind this morning. And we give you that every thought, dear God, will be a godly thought in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We just thank you, God, for who you are. God, there's just so much to pray for. Yes. So much. But as you pour into me, God, I pour out. As you give me this opportunity, God, to minister in prayer to your people, God. I pray, God, that you will use us every day for your glory and your honor, God. Thank you, God. Father, I pray that you will bless our pastor this morning, God. Anoint him from his head to the sole of his feet, dear God. Cover him from side to side in the name of Jesus. That no weapon that form against him shall not prosper. Cover his family, dear God. Keep them grounded and rooted in your word, God. Cover us, God, as a family of grace. Bless us, dear God, and cover us and keep us safe, strong, and know that with God all things are possible. God, we give you glory and honor to your name, God. Because only you alone are worthy, God, of praises and honor. We just thank you, God, that you are the I am. You are the I am. You're the everlasting Father. You are the kings of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the prince of peace. Thank you, God, for your awesomeness, God. You are so great, God, I can't even find the words to express how great you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Magnificent, wonderful, excellent. Striking in appearance. God, you are so good because you have kept us, God. You comfort us, dear God, in the midst of a storm. And God, you know that we go through things sometimes, but God, you are there. You never leave us and you never forsake us. So God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, God. 
Bless us, God. Bless us all this morning, God. Whatever our needs is this morning, God, bless us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I give you honor and I give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a fervent, fervent prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. What an awesome God we serve. Mm, mm, mm. Who wouldn't serve a God like we serve? Who? Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Sister Campbell. God bless your heart. At this time, we're going to have a congregational selection leaning on the everlasting arms. Now, y'all know I'm not a singer, right? But I'm going to do the best that I can. And y'all help me out, okay? Can everybody stand, please? Yeah, y'all go in and clap y'all hands. <laughs> what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting what we doing y'all yeah Leaning. stay fast secure from all along Leaning. 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 on the everlasting Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim's way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. What we doing? Leaning. Yes, we're leaning. Safe and secure from all along. Leaning. Yes, we're leaning. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Then it says, what have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Come on, y'all. Leaning. Yes, we're leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning. Yes, I'm leaning. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Hallelujah! Leaning. We got to lean, Minister Harris. We got to lean. That's what's wrong. Some of us not leaning, Reverend Bands. We got to lean. Hallelujah. <laughs> Gotta lean. Mm -mm -mm. 
All right, where is my girlfriend, Sister Charlene? Here she comes, Sister Charlene is coming uh, with our welcome and our birthdays and anniversary. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. It is a. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. I, I think we're good now, right? All right, all right. It is an honor and a pleasure to greet each and every one of you today with Jesus' joy. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Eric A. Holder, and our assistant pastor, Tony L. Holder, we would like to welcome everyone that is visiting with us virtually and in person. Grace Baptist Church is a church that is striving to make Christian disciples, and our vision for this, our theme for this year is standing firm and always abounding in the work of the Lord. And that is coming from the scripture reference, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. And it reads as such, as such. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. We will also like to acknowledge anyone or recognize anyone that is celebrating a birthday or anniversary or special occasion this week. So happy birthday and happy anniversary. Now let us continue to have an awesome worship experience in the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Charlene. Okay, y'all know I'm kind of thick. Thick-headed. Because I don't know where I am, but that's all right, because I'm getting ready to bring our past up here right now. I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay, so I want to introduce to some and present to others. And you know, we, Annie Green and I, we get all selfish about this thing. And we say, my pastor. Look at Ursula. What you doing over there, girl? Oh, he your pastor too, Ursula. Oh, oh okay, okay. Oh, I got y'all. Okay. So, so I'm going to bring our pastor, <laughs> the Grace Baptist Church's pastor, uh, Pastor Eric A. Holder. Come on, Sister Campbell and Sister Dildy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all already in your two-step. How many of you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? And ruler of nations. Come on, let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him, Al. I'm good, I'm good. Let's celebrate the Lord on this morning. I know I cut y'all short. I know y'all was just getting into y'all's two-step. Uh, I, I, I owe y'all one. I owe y'all one. I owe y'all one. We, 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 we lift up the name of Jesus on high on this morning. We thank our worship leader, Reverend Douglas. Let us give her a round of applause uh, for ushering in the spirit. We thank all who have participated on the program thus far, and we thank the Lord for his presence in this place. Um, I just have a few uh, pastoral announcements just before as we uh, prepare our hearts to move ahead into the word of God on today and, to, and continue on in worship. Um, first, I would just like to uh, remind us 9-11 uh, is, in, is, 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 is in remembrance of today um, where uh, I believe the first time on American soil uh, that, that, that war since the Revolutionary War, 
that someone brought the fight to us and uh, many lives were lost and many families were shattered. Our nation was shook on that day, but, but, but God kept us, amen? That's the one thing I can say, God kept us. And so we, we honor the fallen and we remember them on this day and we pray for strength for their families who have to continue and, and go on. Um, after such a horrific event, um, but we do remember it on today, and we thank God for them. Um, I'm just reminding everyone that we need you to continue. We're up to about 56 people. I know we have at least uh, 100 people in the in the in our body right now, so we need 100 people. If you're online, if you're online, to go to Grace Baptist Church on YouTube on G- Grace ba- Grace BC space baltimore and subscribe to our youtube page subscribe to our youtube page we're up we're almost halfway there so we're asking that you do it uh now or immediately after service um i want to thank especially sister brenda corser uh she made a donation to the church and 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 those of you that know uh, Sister Brenda Corsa's uh, situation know that it is a blessing that she took the time to bless her church she got a lot going on in her life, but she she took the time to bless her church, and I thank God uh, for her blessing and her gift. Uh, 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 so I would ask that you guys would continue to keep her in your prayers. I pray that she's listening and watching. Um, I want to thank the mighty men of grace who came out to, to meet on yesterday. Uh, I, I want to thank our leadership, uh, Deacon Vance, for getting us together and uh he talked about what it meant to be a mighty man in the Bible, what, what David's mighty men were all about. And we, we thank God that he talked. We talked a lot. And I've never, since I've been pastoring here at the church, we have never as men talked for as long as we talked about men's health. And I thank God that, 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 it, that it's the subject was broached. And I thank God for men not being afraid to talk to men about their health and I thank God for each and every one of you brothers you inspired me so I thank God for the conversation that we had um, we also talked about church security as well and 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 ladies understand this each man in this church is going to be on watch for this church uh, so if they stop you or ask you where you're going is simply because they're acting on behalf of we've considered this our home and if this is our home we have a right to check what's going on in our house just for safety purposes amen so we thank god that the men have agreed and we're moving forward with taking care of our home amen um and i believe that's all that we had did i thank deacon vance yeah i think i thank them for getting us together um, moving forward on 915, we will hold the celebration of life for Sister Tina Davis. Uh, uh, many of you remember her. We just, since Sister Tina was just with us a few weeks ago. Uh, she was with us when we went uh, to uh, the picnic or the cookout. And then she came to church that following Sunday. And, uh, and then God called her home. And that just lets us know we don't know the day nor the hour. Uh, when God will call us home, but the, the key is you need to be ready. Amen. You need to be ready. So we ask that you uh, keep the Davis family in your prayers. The services will be held on this Thursday. Uh, the wake will start at 1 p.m., followed by the funeral services at 1.30. Uh, the funeral services will be at March Funeral on 5616. I believe it's uh, Old Court Road in, in Windsor Mill. Um, if you are able to make it, she's a member, she's a family member of this church, come on out. Let's uh, have a celebration of life as only grace can. Amen. There is no, uh, at this time that I know of, there is no repast after service, uh, but we want to gather and celebrate her life. On 918, on this Sunday, this coming Sunday, Uh, We will worship at the Garden of Prayer, 3.30 p.m. I need our choirs, I need our ushers, I need our members uh, to come on out as we worship uh, in the installation services for Reverend Darrell Hilliard as he is starting his church. So uh, I've been called to to bring the word, and and, and when I go out, I like to take what God has given to me 
with me. So I, if you can all come on out, I won't promise, as my pastor used to say, I won't hold you long. Um, but come on out as we uh, uh, see the birth of a new ministry. Amen. And we ought to be excited about the birth of a new ministry. Um, please continue to keep those who are on our prayer list in your prayers. And I'm going to do something we haven't done in a while. And I need y'all to remind me because uh, after I preach, I tend to forget some things. But at the end of this service, at the end of this service, the Lord has led me today. We are going to actually have an altar call. We're going to have an altar call. I'm asking is Minister Barbara Harris if she would prepare her heart to preach, to pray, as well as uh, Reverend Vance. Now, I need y'all to, it's two of y'all, and I know both of y'all can pray, but I need y'all to keep your prayer. <laughs> we, uh, we need you to pray. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I'm calling on both of y'all. I don't want to be here at 4 o'clock. Because <laughs> these are some praying women. These are some praying women. <laughs> And, and, and I'll, I'll take that back. If we got to be here to four to get our breakthrough, we'd be here to four to get our breakthrough. Uh, but, but we ask for, for both of you to prepare uh, to pray uh, for the altar on today. Um, one for what we need. Reverend Minister Harris, if you pray for what we're asking for. And, and Reverend Vance, if you would pray for what God has done. Amen. Amen. I believe that is all I have in the words of, of announcements that someone was needed to come and make an announcement. Minister Harris, is there anyone else that needs to come and make an announcement? Come quick, Reverend Douglas, you need to make an announcement. <coughs> Hold on, Minister Harris, she, she get ready to make it. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I'm sorry. I did forget to mention that. I didn't mention it because it sold out and I didn't want folk to start going on Give the Five. Yay. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, church. Just sneaking in a little bit of announcement. Me and Minister Charles Harris been married for 20 years. <laughs> As of September the 7th, we were married for 20 years. God is good, y'all. Real, real good, y'all don't know. <laughs> He's real good. If y'all looking for a miracle, if y'all looking for a move of God, just look at the Harris family. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. That's the longest relationship I ever had in the name of Jesus. God is real good. Anyway, <laughs> I stand here on behalf of the outreach ministry, and I thank my sister Annie Downey Thomas, or Thomas Downing, for coming in my stead on last week and making and starting the announcement for Thanksgiving. Yes, we are starting a little early this year because as my sister Q is holding the bag, thank you so very much, because God is moving us and God is growing us. And... What usually happens is share. My pastor, the church, the entity, the body is usually the one that makes the purchase first. They go in and they make the purchase from share and then pray that we as the congregation will give enough to cover what they have paid. But today in this time and this year and this season, God is saying, no, he's going to put the responsibility first on us. He's going to have us move first because he's already moved. He's already finished. He's already done the work. So all we got to do is move by faith as we were learning about this morning in Sunday school about faith. So we're going to walk by faith that we're going to cover. We're going to have 75 bags. And he said, as our pastor said last week, that if you take a bag, fill the bag. That means that you're moving by faith to believe that you can fill that bag when you take it. But I pray you take more than one because there's a big need. We know that there's increased and inflation and all kinds of different things are taking place. So, but the people of God are blessed people of God. The, the people of God have whatever it is that they ask for in the name of Jesus. So we are the ones that are to take care of those that are unable to take care of themselves because we serve a mighty, mighty good God. 
And my pastor asked for me to tell you, and he moves just like how I move. I try to give you as much information as possible so you won't be lost when you get there, that the total amount is between 55 and 85, depending on what store you go to, go to and what brand you choose. We're not choosy. We're just saying. Depends on how some people only want to buy the Del Monte brand. Some want to buy the store brand. Whatever it is you want to do to fill that bag, it's going to cost $55 to $85. And we appreciate you. God bless you. You will be blessed because God has told us. Isaiah 58 tells us to take care of those. Take care of the widows. That's a true fast. That's what a real fast is about. Taking care of those that are unable to take care of themselves. Uh, or don't have enough. We are here to assist. That's what the church is here to do. So be blessed and continue. We're having an awesome time. An awesome time in God today. Now let me share two things with you to follow up on what she just said. She said that you can go out and purchase. This is just my recommendation if you want to be blessed. Don't buy less than what you buy for yourself. And then give it to somebody else. Buy at the minimum what you would get for yourself to give to someone else. And God will rain down blessings on you. I'm just, just giving you some information on how to, how to do it. Because oftentimes we'll go by and we'll buy something a little less than what we would for someone who's in need. And, and God will look at that and say, I blessed you with enough to bless them as I blessed you. So we need to consider that. I'm not saying that you have to. I'm not saying that you have to. I just want you to consider it in your heart that with whatever you would get for yourself, that you would bless someone else with. Amen? Amen. Are there any other announcements other than we getting ready to prepare our hearts and minds for offering? We'll prepare our hearts and minds to give. It is a time to give in the church for those of you that are watching uh, via Facebook and to those of you who are in the sanctuary you can also give through Givelify Givelify.com you'll see a picture of Pastor Holder or the Grace Baptist Church that way you know you have the right church uh, and you can give there as well we'll have a trustee come and stand on the front the baskets are uh, due to we're still maintaining our COVID distance the baskets will be on the front row uh, you will be able to give your missions offering, your, your, your tithes, your, your, your Ezra or restoring the temple, which is our building fund, and your general offering. We thank you, Brother Steve is coming, amen, and he is going to stand. If I could get a brother to stand on this door right here, Brother Quentin, Brother Quentin. No, I got Brother Quentin back there. Come on up here, stand on that door. Amen. No, you don't have to hold it. You don't have to hold it. You just stand there and guard it. There you go. Just stand on that door. There you go. Ain't nobody going through that, young man. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Let us follow. Let us all stand and follow the directions of our ushers. Can we get some giving music? <laughs> March us. Let us pray. 
Our Father and our God, we thank you for an opportunity to give, oh Lord. We thank you for the blessings that you've blessed us with, and we thank you for an opportunity to sow back into your church, oh God. Now, Lord, we pray that you would bless this offering and bless the Grace Baptist Church, uh, that we would use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In the blessed name of Jesus, let all the God's children say amen. 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 Uh, as we prepare our hearts and minds for the word of God, um, turn with me. Did I miss something? Turn with me uh, to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms. Uh, or the books of Psalms, there's a lot of them. Psalms 30, Psalms 30. I think that's where we'll go from today. Psalms 30. After a selection, we will be back with a word from the Lord. Psalms 30. Test. Test, test, test. Test, test. Test. Come on, everybody, just stand on your feet and worship with us. Test. Test, test. Pastor said we're going to have prayer. And the only way the Lord shows up is if we set the atmosphere, amen? Amen. amen. I lift my hand. opportunity. I love you, Jesus. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Come on. Lord, I love you more than anything. Say, I love, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more. from him. I need you to worship right here. I love you, Jesus. If you're glad for what he's done for you, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on. Get your worship on right here. I love I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. his love for you that he died for you we're gonna sing it one more time lord i love you lord i love you more than anything Let's give him some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 
mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't nobody know your story but you. Can't nobody praise him for what he's done for you but you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the highs. Isn't he good? Hallelujah. Amen. In the moments, in the moments that we have remaining. In the moments. Move, Lord. Break some chains, Lord. Deliver somebody today, Lord. Set somebody free, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We promise, Lord, to give you the honor and the praise. Yes, yes. I want to move forward, but somebody's in the midst of their breakthrough. And, I, and the Lord won't let me go nowhere until you get that breakthrough. Move them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let the church say, Amen. In Psalm, the 30th chapter, let us pray, our Father and our God. We thank you for your presence. Not only just being here, Lord, but you moved in this place on this day. You've touched some hearts and you've changed some minds today, Lord. And for this, Lord, we say, thank you. Lord, we ask that you would continue to sup with us a little while and give us your holy word that you might speak to our hearts. For if we can hear from you, then we'll know what to do. Me, Lord, your humble servant, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart May it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, for you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In Psalms 30, shout amen if you have it. We find these words recorded. I will extol thee, O oh Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O oh Lord, thou hast brought my soul from the grave, and thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Somebody say, I'm living in the favor of God. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Thank you, ushers. For his anger endureth but a moment. I want to focus on that, that verse right after, that part right after but a moment. In his favor is life. I want to talk about living in the favor of God. 
because weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Beloved, in searching for the meaning of the word uh, favor, I found in Merriam-Webster's dictionary that he defined it as special privileges or rights granted. You see, mankind's favor, Sister Zelda, uh, can give you an advantage for success. Because man can give you favor. Man can show favor upon you. But, but man's favor can only help you in the natural. Can I get a witness? But God's favor gives you an advantage in the supernatural. Now, I don't know about you, but I prefer the supernatural favor over the natural favor any time. Is there a witness in this house? You see, man can only bless you in the natural, but so much. But God can add his super to the natural that man has already given you. Can I get a witness in this place? When you put God first, when you take care of his business, and by that I mean you give your time, your talent, your testimony, your tide. Oh, oh y'all can go help me in this place. When you give to him and make him the priority of your life. When you focus on trusting in his ability instead of your own. Good things. Let me, let me, let me fix that up, Deke. I didn't say that right. Uh, that, that's an understatement. It's not good things. It's supernatural things will begin to take place in your life that the folk around you won't even understand how come God has blessed you in spite of all that he's seen you go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folk will get mad with what God has poured on you because they looking at you in the natural and they have not seen you pray in the spiritual. You see, when we have favor, Somebody say favor. Watch this. God is in our lives and the fingerprints of God will be left on the people we come in contact with. Oh, y'all just missed that. Now watch this. When you have favor, the fingerprints of God will be left. I don't care where you go. I don't care who you contact. Because God is so magnificent, he will leave his fingerprints on the people that you touch. Yeah, the, the, the people, you, you might not even mention sometimes who your living Savior really is, but they can tell based on the Holy Spirit in you, and they will become convicted of they just want what you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will use us to make an unforgettable impact on those who are around us. Oh, y'all just missing this thing this morning because y'all ought to be excited as I am because y'all need to understand that when God produces his favor on you, sometimes you don't have to do anything. Why? Because you ain't even worthy of his favor, but, but he, he gave it to you. And sometimes his favor just rubs off that people start following you where you going. You going to church this morning, I'm going to stop by where you going this morning. They don't, you don't even understand why. Because it's God's what? Favor. Can I put some meat on this plate? Y'all can say no. I can keep preaching some milk. I can keep preaching the milk. In the text, saying how y'all sure I can put some meat on it? Then let's talk about the text. Let's talk in the text this morning, because if, if you're going to get some meat from a preacher, you got to get the exact word of God from the preacher. So I don't know how many, I don't care where you go to get the word. Just make sure that he makes his way into the scriptures. Amen. So I, that's why I say it for us in the text <laughs> so that you know this ain't me. <laughs> in the text this morning, we have the Psalm of Thanksgiving. King David is is is. is called the author of this, and he thanks God for deliverance. Look at that. And he calls out all of Israel. He didn't, now he, here's the thing about favor. He didn't say he was just going to thank God. 
he called on all of Israel to thank God. So let me push back because I talked to my men yesterday. Brothers, as the head of your house, you are required to call on everybody in your house to thank God. And you, 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 you see, he's called, he's the king. David is the king. And they, because God has blessed him and Israel, he calls on everybody in the nation to thank God. It's too many times that, 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 that the, the, the woman is in the house thanking God and the man ain't got nothing to say. And God, and he's the head and God is blessing the house. So I'm talking to my kings right now. Sometimes you got the call, make the call to the family and not just your immediate family, but your entire family. And you got to call them out and say, look, we need to give a thanksgiving offering unto God for what he's done for us. You see, David exalts the Lord because God lifted him up and did not let his enemies rejoice over him. I could stop right there and we could shout on uh, uh, because that's favor right there. Psalm 40, uh, Psalm 40 verse 2 says it like this in the Bible. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock. Uh, and established my going. Isn't it good to know that even though you might stumble and fall in the mud, you might stumble and fall into some mess in your life, but that God will pick you up and set you on a rock, and that rock that he sets you on, do you know that his name is Jesus? He is the rock of ages. God picked up David and and, and as they say in the, the old church, they picked him up and turned him around and what, placed his feet on solid ground. He won't let the people who want to see you fail rejoice over you. Somebody talk about it. I knew I was going to get at least one witness in there because every now and then there's some people that are watching you. That want to see you fail. They waiting on the moment when you stumble and fall. But see, God got a way of turning that thing around so that those who, who want to see you fall are not even able to, to rejoice over what is happening to you. Even, even what the Bible says in Psalm 23, he says he'll make my enemies my footstool. In other words, he said them people that want to see you fall, he'll make those same people lift you up. Y'all missed that. Because footstool in, that, in, in the 23rd Psalm means that it will they will raise you up. See, sometimes people want to see you fall, but God ain't going to let them rejoice over you. Is there anybody here that has ever lifted your eyes to Jesus? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and called on him and thanked him because he didn't let your enemies rejoice over you. You knew they were waiting to see you fail. And God stepped in. Well, David goes on further to say that he cried to God for help. And he healed him. At some point, David was sick, sick almost unto death, and he thought he was going to die. But he cried unto the Lord. Today, more than ever, we're living amongst the sick. We either suffer from one illness or another. And if we're not suffering from a physical illness, we're suffering from mental illness. And David found himself in darkness and at death's door. And, but he thanks the Lord that he brought up his soul from the grave. In the text it says Sheol, uh, uh, for some Bibles that you read, uh, uh, which means a place of unrighteous dead in Hebrew. In other words, God brought his soul back from the grave. See, sometimes we got to pinch ourselves. Because God has delivered us time and time again. And, and, and understand this. 
He delivered Israel time and time again. And each time he delivered them, they made their way back to the high places. They built those high places for other gods. And God loved them so much that he, he saved them time and time again. And, and, and the text closes with weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. But morning, Reverend Douglas, comes after the night. And the night before, as they say, is always darkest before the dawn. Uh, and the night before is always the difficult, most difficult time to deal with our problem. The night before we get our breakthrough is always a time when you feel like you can't go no more. The night before your breakthrough is when the enemy is about to raise his hand and say, I got him. Uh, but the night before your breakthrough is when Jesus begins to move by his power. The night before your breakthrough is when God gets ready to step in and he showers his favor upon you. He showers it the night before so that on tomorrow when you come on, help me in this place, you'll have joy in the morning. Somebody shout glory in this place but before I take my seat before I take my seat let me leave you with a few thoughts I could I could go there right now and go sit down but I need to leave you with some points to carry you through and carry me through this week you see we live in the favor of God because we have a repentant heart gotta start there gotta start there Ram Douglas verse 5 we see David says that we praise God for his anger is but temporary for his anger endures but for a moment. That's what the text says. The anger of God, uh, the response of his holiness to our sin. See, in other words, David had to say that there had to, he had to mess up somewhere along the way. And God had become angry. Uh, and David had been in trouble enough, if you know the story of David's life. David had been in trouble enough that he understood what it was like to be in sin when he made mistakes to God. Uh, and Israel was no different. They were a fickle nation. Doesn't that sound like us today? Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, today, many in the church have become fickle. Ever since COVID hit, folk have become fickle and they are falling away from the church they're caught up in social media church they caught up on this pastor and that pastor they caught up on this ministry and that ministry but they forget about where God has planted them and where God has planted you is where he intends to grow you. I'm going to pause for a second because I don't care where you go or who you listen to. The fertile ground is where God planted you. The nourishment you will receive is where God planted you. Now, but David reminds us that, that sin took place because God was angry. Uh, and David was speaking from a stance of repentance just like he spoke in Psalms 51. Uh, if you have your Bibles, flip over to Psalms 51 verses 10 uh, where he says, create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Uh, he says this, and this is clearly uh, what he need, what we need as Christians that for God to not do. Do not cast me away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Uh, it says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uh, and uphold thy free spirit within me. Look at, let me say it again. See, David was sure in the, in the text this morning, he talks about joy. And in Psalms 51, after we repent, there ought to be some joy. Uh, you ought to be excited that you have gotten back in a right relationship with God and you ought to ask God to uphold you with his free spirit. Uh, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Uh, bring back the joy of my salvation. There's favor in repentance our God is a forgiving God and when we repent not just to say we sorry I just said something right there write it in your book it's not about just saying I'm Lord I'm sorry that's not repentance that's being sorry repentance is turning away from the sin 
Because it doesn't mean if you, you can be sorry because you know you're going to do it again. That's why they say you sorry. You sorry because I know you're going to do it again. Repentance says I'm turning away. I'm not going to do it no more, Lord. And sometimes we got to ask God to help us. Sometimes we need God's help to change. Uh, uh, God shows us his power to forgive and he shows us favor. Look at the text. Uh, isn't it good to know that God's anger at our sin is only temporary? Yeah, if you have a repented heart, it, it'll only be t as, as, as long as you are ready to repent. Uh, I thank God that, it, it, that he isn't still upset with me for what I did when I was a teenager. I thank God that he's still not upset with me for what I did when I was in my 20s. Uh, I thank God he's still not upset for what I did in my 30s. Uh, I thank God because he, he's not upset for what I did in my 40s. Uh, and I thank God that he's not upset for what I'm doing in my 50s. Uh, and I praise God that I know the joy of his salvation is going to keep me because for his anger endureth but for a moment. Secondly, secondly, the favor of God will shift us. Yeah, yeah. The favor of God will shift us. David says in the text, in his favor is life. Life. There seems to be no life without God. It is the favor of God. He says in his favor is life. And in life is more abundantly. See, God allows us to live each and every day. Just think about it. Every Christian, if every Christian understood that when you opened your eyes this morning, it was because of God's favor. Every morning, you ought to just open your eyes. And as you sitting on the side of the bed, you ought to shake your head and just laugh and say favor. Because he gave you one more day. He, he didn't have to do it, but there's some seniors here that's been living a little while, and you understand his favor for keeping you as long as he... See, see while you're young, you just think it's you. You think it's your energy. You think it's your power. You think it's your strength. But when you live a little while, when you have gone around the sun a few times, uh, and you understand that it ain't you no more, and you realize that it's God's favor that's keeping you... Uh, you ought to shake your head and say, thank God for your favor. You see, favor starts with his mercy, his kindness, his good, and the goodness of God. Favor does not look at your family connection. It doesn't look at your standing in the church or your community. God gives favor as it pleases him. Ah, uh, y'all gonna get mad with me in a minute. God's favor deals with his, his own timing. And in his season, it, it's not about what we do. It's not about what we have. It's not about what we don't do. <laughs> it's not about what we don't have. <laughs> it is it, within God's power to reveal his favor at any time. <laughs> You see, some of y'all received his favor even before you knew who he was. Because the Bible said that, that he'll, he, he, gives, he, he lets the sun rise on the just and the unjust. That in other words, he'll give favor to whom he pleases. He'll give favor to the saved and he'll give favor to the unsaved. Somebody shout glory. But the shifting starts to happen when you become saved. Uh, it, well, no, no, let me back it up, Sister Zelda, because cause, cause, cause the shifting does happen when you're unsaved. Uh, because sometimes God will bless you so much that you can't, and, and you, ain't, you don't even know him, uh, that you in your sinful life will realize that it was God. Uh, and then God will shift you from a sinner to a saint. Uh, Simply because he gave you favor. Because all the mess you did knew you should have been dead sleeping in your grave. You knew you should have been out sleeping on park benches. 
but God granted you favor and you had sense enough to realize that it was Jesus. He, and that, in other words, then he shifted you from a sinner to a saint. All you had to do was what? Believe. Somebody shout glory in this place. The shifting, the shifting uh, it changes our circumstances. When, when, when the supernatural begins to hit your natural, it changes your circumstances from, from some, some of us have gone from obscurity to the limelight. In other words, before God shifted you and put favor on your life, nobody knew who you were. They could care who you was from. You might have thought you was somebody, but the world didn't care about who you was. But when God puts his super on your natural, it'll shift you into the line. Like some of you don't even want it when he gives it to you. Sometimes he push you out there and you try to back up because you don't want to be in the in the favor that God has given you. But he'll move you from obscurity to the limelight where people are coming to you and you really don't know what to do. It ain't nothing but the favor of God resting on you. And you got to understand that you got to learn to walk in that favor. You can't run from it because it goes where you go uh, everywhere Jesus went in the favor that God had rested upon him people went even when he tried to run away they tried to follow him because of his favor there's a shift ah, that'll allow you to go from working in buildings to buying buildings yeah yeah y'all y'all ain't y'all ain't with me this morning I'm just talking about God's favor because God moves us. He'll shift you. He'll do something in your life that is supernatural that you weren't, you didn't deserve it. But God said, now's the time and I'm going, I'm going to impart my favor on you. And I'm going to move you from, from a consumer to a producer. Y'all, y'all missing this thing. Y'all missing this thing. Maybe it's just for me, Minister Harris. Maybe I'm preaching to myself because, because God will begin to shift you. In his favor is life. In his favor is life. And in the life of God, it means that we move closer to him. But watch this. I don't know about you. But Jesus has helped me shift my attitude. <laughs> I don't approach situations like I used to. Because I got favor. I, I'm not boasting about it. Because ain't nothing you can do about the favor God gave me. And there ain't nothing I can do about the favor God gave you. But I shift my thinking because I have favor. I approach circumstances differently where I would normally act out because I got favor, I see the problem a little differently now. I don't have to go there because of my favor. Because I know that God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I ain't got to act out because I got favor. And I know that my God it's going to take care of me. I know because of my favor, the enemy want to see if I'm really who I say I am. So he sends demons and imps to try to trip me up. And we have to realize that we have to change our attitude about him. Because we have favor, we got to let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Because when I operate with the mind of Christ, I don't respond to things like I don't have favor. <laughs> See, when, when, I, when I got Christ on my mind, I, I try to respond like he would. So sometimes folk will get mad with me in the church and say, Pastor, why don't you do that? You can't let them do that. 
I said, I've already handled the situation because I gave it to Jesus. The, the old me might have acted a different way. And the old you might have acted a different way. But now when you have favor, you got to act like you got favor. You can't be messing up God's favor all willy nilly out here sinning because you let somebody get in your ear. Because he shifted my attitude. Watch this. I don't respond to my enemies like I used to because my attitude has been shifted. The, the word of God says in Psalms 27 and 6, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, watch this, watch this. Uh, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. Can I, can I just, just, just jump on this for a second? Just a minute. I'm almost on my third point. Look at what the psalmist says. My head is going to be lifted up. My head is above my enemies. In other words, he shifted me to a higher place. And I know they're all around me, but I still stand above all my enemies. He says, therefore, look at what you're supposed to do. Offer in the tabernacle sacrifices of We come to church and can't even get a praise out. But because he shifted me. I ought to come to church. I used to be here. We could do that thing. But he shifted me. I got favor. I'm looking above my enemies. I understand their situation a little better. They don't have the favor that I have. So I can't act like they act. He shifted me. So I ought to offer joy in his sanctuary. I ought to lift up holy hands in his sanctuary. I ought to shout hallelujah in his sanctuary because of his favor. Sit down, sit down. I'm going to get to point three and then y'all, we can run around the church. Hear me, hear me, watch this. He'll shift you, he'll shift you. And here's the thing. If you find yourself, and this is just the Lord talking to me right now, on the same level as your enemy. He said, all you gotta say is, Lord shift me that I might see. Because sometimes we need to be praying for our enemies. We don't need to talk down about them. We don't need to spout about them. We need God to move us above them. And then watch this. Ask God to lift them. If he going to give you favor, ask God. You ain't got no enemy no more. Y'all be on the same team. Sometimes you got to pray for that enemy. That God might give them the favor that he gave you. That he might see the same things that you see. Finally, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I've been walking for a minute. Finally. In God's favor, the text says, is joy. God is faithful. Through the worst calamities in life, David talked about it. He talked about being sick. He talked about being at death's door. And he said, God delivered me. Uh, in the midst of tragedy, we ought to be able to look to God and hope. Weeping may endure for a night, but what? Joy comes in the morning. Jesus said, I give you, look at what Christ says. I give you my joy. And that, the, and that your joy shall be full. Look, look at what Jesus said about it. Jesus says he gives us joy. You can't purchase it. 
<laughs> you can't steal it. <laughs> I, I know some of us want to say, you can't fake it. <laughs> he said, I give you my joy and that your joy shall be full. The Bible says in 61 Psalms, uh, in, in Isaiah 61, 3, that God gives us the oil of joy for mourning. Even during times of death, he gives us a, a modicum of joy. Those of you that know the words of prayer know even in death, we ought to still have joy. Uh, I know the family mourns, and, uh, and I understand that, but, but, but there, there ought to be knowing that your loved one is saved. There's some joy in it. may not seem like it right then and there. And David said it like this. He says in, in, in the psalm, take not away thy joy of my salvation. He don't want you. The one thing David didn't want to lose was the joy of his salvation. Yes, yes, yes. God's joy is, is beautiful. It's soul saving. And it's given to, to, to see us through our trials. It's not like happiness. Y'all know that. We've talked about it before. Because happiness is a result of our outside stimuli. And once the stimuli, once the Ravens lose a game, y'all ain't happy with them no more. Y'all ain't happy with Lamar when he lose a game. I'm just telling the truth. Y'all know I'm right. Y'all still love him, but y'all ain't happy with him. We ain't happy right now. We lost the game. Do you know that the city of Washington, D.C. mourns when the commanders lost, lose? The whole city. So you know they've been mourning for a long time. And I'm talking about my team. If you ever been to D.C. after a loss, the city is quiet. Show up after a win, they happy. That ain't joy. That ain't joy. Because it's because of an outside stimuli. Things are good because I have a job and I got money in the bank and, and the children are acting right. But what happens when, when I, I lose my residence, when, I, when my children stop acting right? What happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happiness goes away. But joy is the result of an inside stimuli. It's a supernatural stimuli, a divine gift from God. Jesus said he, he'll give it to, I give you my joy. Uh, it's a divine attitude, uh, a divine perspective in everyone and everything in my life could be off the chain, but I still got joy. I, I know deep down in my heart, I might not even have a smile on my face, uh, but there's joy down in my heart simply because of who God is and what God has been done. Why? Because this joy I have, uh, the world didn't give it to me. And this joy I have, what? The world can't take it away. What's so crucial that you need to understand is that our Christian lives are going to be filled with a lot of stuff. We're going to be filled with sickness and it's going to be filled with some healthy times. It's going to be filled with weakness and it's going to be filled with strength. It's going to be filled with want and it's going to be filled with wealth. It's going to be filled with some crosses and it's going to be filled with some comforts. Uh, somebody know what I'm talking about. But even though it, it feels as though we've been through hell and back, we still have what? Anybody here today still have your joy in spite of what you going through? Ain't none of us been that good, but God still gives us joy because of, because of Jesus. You know, the righteous son of God because of Jesus we have great joy I know that weeping may endure for a night but my joy is gonna come in the morning as I go to my seat we live in the favor of God because your sickness is about to be replaced by your healing we live in the favor of God because your grief is about to be replaced with greatness we live in the favor of God because your wants, hello, is about to be replaced with a few money in your pocket. 
we ought to shout. Thank you to the Lord because closed doors are about to be open. All because of favor. You ought to shout because he looked beyond your faults and he saw your needs. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Hear me in this place. Listen. The songwriter said it like this. I'm walking in the favor of God. His grace and mercy has brought me this far. I will believe, watch this, all his word says about me. Lack and poverty are not my destiny. I'm walking and I'm living. I'm walking in the favor of of God. Come on, let's give him some praise. If there's a man, woman, boy, or girl, and you don't know Jesus, if you're watching and you don't know Jesus, we offer Christ to you. In the favor of God. We want you to walk in the favor of God. His grace and mercy has brought us. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, come on, slip out your seat. Come on down to the front of the church and get to know Jesus the Christ. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. That he bled, suffered, and died on an old rugged cross. That you might have a right to the tree of life. That he might uh, welcome you into the arms, into a relationship with God the Father. Will there be one? If you know Jesus and you're looking for a church home, we offer Christ to you. If you are looking, if you're on Facebook and you want to become a part of the body of the Grace Baptist Church, just type in, I want to join Grace. Now, the thing we ask you in joining our church is that you come to work, that you come to serve, that God is calling you to this place because we don't have pew members here. God has called each and every one of us to do something in the kingdom. And we would ask that you be a part of the something that God is doing at Grace. Because he's going to have us to do some great things. And we welcome you if this is where God is calling you to be. And then finally, if you're in a backslidden condition and you belong to us, and you fell out of favor, because you can fall out of favor. Am I right about it? <laughs> you can fall out of favor. We want you to come on back home. If you're watching on Facebook, just say, I want to come home. If you're here in the sanctuary, can't nobody say anything. We all been through it. We've been there before. We know we need to get it together. We restore folk here. We don't be down on them. Because that's what Christ would do. He reached down and what? Pick you up. My final plea. Man, woman, boy, or girl, if you don't know Jesus, come now. If you know Jesus, if you're looking for a church home, we open our doors to you. And then finally, if you're in a backslidden condition, come, come, come. Finally, um, as we come to the altar, going to ask the ushers to have hand sanitizer ready. We're going to ask that you wear your mask. Keep your mask on. 
I'm going to ask those that would desire prayer if they would come to the altar now. Come to the altar now. If you desire prayer, come to the altar. Move forward, everybody up front. Take a step forward. You got, you got people want to get in. This is where we belong because there's some sickness among us that we need to pray for. Come on, come on, come on. Keep pressing, keep pressing. Now, if you need to sit down, if you are sick, you may sit on the front pew. Those that are, are, are sick may sit on the front pew. And understand this. Y'all can hold, those that feel comfortable can, can hold hands. We just make sure that you sanitize immediately after you finish. Our ushers are ready as you turn to go out. They will be ready to sanitize you. I never had to have such a good, a long conversation at the altar for prayer. Uh, but... But, but I need some sanitizing if we have it on this side so that when people leave, they can they can sanitize their hands. Fine, Minister Harris, you ready? Amen. Let us go to, and remember, let us pray not just for our situation, but let us pray for someone else. Good to see you, son. Good to see you. Like not there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Psalm 51, 10, 11, 12. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well. Yeah. Father God, as we come to you be right now, Lord God, we have read your word, Lord God, we have heard your word, Lord God. Your spirit has moved in this place, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you will create in us, Lord God, a, a new spirit, Lord God, that you, Lord God, will, Lord God, will not, Lord God, take your the joy of your salvation away from us, Lord God. I pray right now, Lord God, that we will seek first your kingdom, Lord God. I pray right now, Lord God, that we will not seek things, Lord God. We will not seek anything but your face, Lord God. We will seek who you are, Lord God. That we will move like how you want us to move, Lord God. And the, your word tells us, Lord God, that if we seek you, Lord God, that you, Lord God, will add all those other things we may need. If we need a healing, if we need deliverance, Lord God, if we need a financial blessing, Lord God, if we need a wayward child to come home, Lord God, if we need a loved one, Lord God, to get well, Lord God, whatever it may be, Lord God, if we seek you first, Lord God, those are the things, Lord God, that we should be seeking, Lord God, we should be asking for, Lord God, that is where we, our hearts should be, Lord God, creating us, Lord God, a new heart, Lord God, please, Lord God, turn our stony heart to flesh, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, a pure repentance will take place in this body right now, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that we will turn, Lord God, and, and Lord God, not just say I'm sorry, Lord God, but turn Turn from our wicked ways, Lord God, and, and just call on you, Lord God, and surrender our entire being to, Lord, to you, Lord God. It says, let this mind be in Christ, Lord God. So I pray right now for our minds to belong to you, that our soul, that we, everything about us, Lord God, your scripture tells us, Lord God, that we should love you, Lord God, with everything in us, Lord God, our whole mind and our whole soul, our whole being, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to, to not leave this way the same way we came in, Lord God. Yeah. Let a shifting take place. Place, Lord God, in our attitude, Lord God. Let us shift and take place in our spirit, Lord God. How we used to act, we don't act that way, Lord God. We are new creatures, Lord God. I pray right now, Lord God, we will demonstrate that you are real, that you are powerful, Lord God, that you are an awesome God, Lord God, that we, Lord God, are above our enemies in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We're above all of this madness that's going on. We're above all of this negativity, Lord God. So I pray right now, Lord God, that you will create in us a right spirit, Lord God, and renew, Lord God, us in our minds, Lord God. Let us be transformed today in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let us seek you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let us not be the same in the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, Reverend Vance. 
Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Yes, Let my Lord. prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Yes. Lord, hear our cry, Lord God. Hear our cry, Lord yes, God. Lord. And climb your ear. Come to the edge of heaven and bend over, Lord God. And hear our cry, Lord hear God. Cry, Lord. But as a father, Lord God, you look up on us and you protect us, Lord God. You provide for us, God. Yes. You heal us, Lord God. You forgive us of our iniquities, Lord God. Yes, Lord. But God, most of all, Father God, you have redeemed us, Lord God. Even in our sinful state, Lord oh, God, yeah. you look down upon us, Lord God. Yes, and you Lord. redeemed us, Lord God. You said it in full with oh, yeah. your blood, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we thank you because of what you have done for us, Lord God. Every day, God, you give us new mercies, Lord God. Yes, Your Lord. compassion fails not, Lord God. So all those are the things, God, that you have done for us. Yes, Lord. What in the uh, realm of what you have done for us what will we render unto you, yes. God? What will we render unto you, Lord God? We will praise your name in the sanctuary, Lord God. We will worship you daily, Lord oh, yeah. God. We will pray without ceasing, God. We will not quench the Holy Spirit, yes, Lord God. Lord. We will, Lord God, return your love, Lord God, that you have uh, given us to others, Lord God. We yeah. will pray for the lost, Lord God. We will sacrifice, Lord God, that which you have loaned unto us, Lord God, yeah. that others, Lord God, may see you, God, not us, Lord God, but glorify you. Yeah. We will, Lord God, give, Lord God, back to you all that we possibly can, Lord God. You have done for us, Lord God, what we could not do for ourselves, Lord God. Yeah. You have been faithful even in our unfaithfulness, Lord God. You have been a healer, Lord God, even when we didn't know we were sick, Lord God. You have been, Lord God, oh God, a mountain God for us, Lord God. Yeah. Oh God, you have been there for us, Lord God. You have touched us, Lord God, in ways we cannot explain, God. When we look to the hills from which cometh our help, Lord God, we know our help cometh from you. Yes, you have Lord. been a strong tower, Lord God, a mighty refuge. You have been the shepherd in our lives, God. You have led us in green pastures, Lord yes. God. You have restored our souls, Lord God. You have, Lord God, led us in the path of righteousness. For yes. your name's sake, Lord God. So, God, we say, Jesus, 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 Jesus Lord God. You have healed us from grief, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. You have provided in this place called grace, yes. your grace, Lord God. You yes. have given us a shepherd after your own heart, Lord oh, yes. God. You have done yes. marvelous things yes. for us, Lord God. And we thank you, thank Lord you, God. Lord. We thank you, Father God. We are grateful, Lord God. Yes, God, we know, God, that you have blessed us with favor, Father God. Yes. We know, Lord God, that the favor reigns on us, Lord God. Oh, yes. And we know, Father God, if we stay in your word, Lord God, yes. that it will accomplish that which you sent it out to accomplish. It will not come back unto us for it. Yes. And so, Lord God, today, Lord God, we see the Lord high and lifted up. Yeah. We see his train, Lord God, filling the temple. And we say, holy, 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 holy Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 holy. holy Lord God Almighty, in the matchless, mighty name of Yeshua, who is our Savior, who is our the resurrected, soon returning Christ, 
we say amen. Amen. Before you leave the altar, before you leave the altar, thank you for those prayers. Everybody take a, well, I'm going to pray before you leave, but uh, get your hand sanitized before you leave the altar. Let us look to the Lord to be dismissed. Uh, our Father and our God, we thank you for the word on today, oh God. We thank you for your favor, oh God. Now, Lord, we pray in the blessed name of Jesus that as we leave this place, we would share that which you've given us with someone else. Lord, open our hearts and minds to draw deeper into the word that you have given us in Psalm 30. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Lord, we thank you that someone got their breakthrough today. We thank you that someone got their healing today. We thank you, Father God, that someone grew a little stronger and were encouraged on today. Now, Lord, may your grace and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, abide in our hearts, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let the children of God shout amen. Amen, amen and God bless you. Go in peace and sin no more.